I hope you enjoy our liturgy. And we begin our Mass in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And happy Father's Day to all fathers. Today, we celebrate the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Christ. We do this all the time when we celebrate Mass. But why today do we have this uh, feast? There's a reason why the church wants us to have this solemnity of Corpus Christi. And to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge our sins and ask for God's mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Christ have mercy, Christ. 
God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. And being a priest of God Most High, he blessed Abram with these words. Blessed be Abram by God Most High, the creator of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who delivered your foes into your hand. Then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You are a priest forever. In the line of Melchizedek, you are a priest forever. In the line of Melchizedek, the Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The scepter of your power the Lord will stretch forth from Zion. In the midst of your enemy, you are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. Your is princely power in the day of your birth. In the holy splendor, before the day star, let the dew, like the dew I have, begotten you. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The Lord has sworn 
and he will not repent. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup, after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowds about the kingdom of God, and he healed those who needed to be cured. As the day was drawing to a close, the twelve approached him and said, Dismiss the crowd so that they can go to the, to the surrounding villages and farms and find lodging and provisions, for we are in a deserted place here. He said to them, Give them some food yourselves. They replied, Five loaves and two fishes are all we have, unless we ourselves go and buy food for all these people. Now the men there numbered about 5,000. Then he said to his disciples, Have them sit down in groups of about 50. They did so and made them all sit down. Then taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing over them, broke them, and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. They all ate and were satisfied. And when the leftover fragments were picked up, they filled 12 wicker baskets. My sisters and brothers in Christ, the gospel of the Lord. In a couple of weeks, we'll be celebrating what we all refer to the fourth, that's the independence of this wonderful country. Today, it is Juneteenth, 
And we celebrate these days, the Memorial Day, the Veterans Day, the Thanksgiving, all these days that we celebrate as holidays, they have great meaning in the life of all citizens and all those who are in this wonderful country. These days are not just symbolic. They mean a lot to all of us. And we look forward to celebrate those days because they are at the heart of this nation. And when we celebrate, we are really thinking about what happened on each particular day that we celebrate. I hope and pray that we do this uh, to explain, especially uh, to the young people, because they need to understand why do we celebrate independence? Why do we celebrate Juneteenth? Why do we celebrate Memorial Day and other very special days? Even the flag, was it last week, Flag Day? It means a lot. It's not just a symbol. It means the heart of the nation. And if we pay so much reverence to these days, why not also to, most important, to the days that we have, the solemnities that we have in our church? The solemnity of the body and blood of Christ like I said in my introductory remark, we celebrate this every day in Mass. But why do we have this as a very special solemnity today? Because the church wants you and I to focus a very special attention on this wonderful sacrament. Because sometimes we take things for granted. Today, according to the Pew Research, only 31% of Catholic Christians in the U.S. believe in the true presence of our Lord Jesus Christ in the body and blood of Christ that we celebrate, the Eucharist. Only 31%. Everybody, they go to church, but they don't believe in the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. When I was reading this research, I said, I know our parish is one of those 31%. We are not part of the 70% who do not believe in the presence of, the, of, of Christ in the Eucharist. All of us here, I believe, as St. Anthony of Padua, we do believe in the true presence of Christ in the Eucharist. If you don't, you ask yourself why. Because this came from our Lord Jesus Christ. Like St. Cyril of Jerusalem at one time, he commented, this is my body, this is my blood. He said these words, they came from Jesus Christ himself. And he says, who dare should doubt the word of our Lord? If we say we do not believe in the true presence of Christ in the Eucharist, then we don't believe if, even his words that he said, this is my body, this is my blood, and do this in remembrance of me. And that's very important for the Catholic Christians today. You and I, we have to think, when we receive the Eucharist, do we receive the true presence of Christ in this Eucharist? We know when instituted, the first people to receive the Eucharist were the 12 apostles. And when they received, they did not taste the flesh of Jesus. They did not taste the blood. It was bread, it was wine. But they believed in the transformative words of Jesus Christ. This now is the body of Christ. This now is the blood of Christ. And they handed it over until today we still have it. Why are we not believing in the true presence of Christ in the Eucharist? And when we receive, we, receive, we become in communion with Jesus Christ himself. 
That's why we call it the Holy Communion, because that's what happens when we receive the Eucharist. We become one with Jesus Christ. And when we become one, because all of us have received the same Christ, we become one people. We become in communion with one another. And that's why we are referred to as the body of Christ. We become the Eucharistic people because that's who we are. But we have, my dear sister and brothers in Christ, to believe in the true presence of Christ in the Eucharist. We know in our church that when we celebrate Mass, that's the source of our faith and the summit of our faith. And that's why we have to show it, even to the world. Yes, we cannot explain the mystery, but we believe in the words of Christ. What he said is true. This is my body, and this is my blood. Jesus gave himself to us as food. So just as we celebrate those days, we know in the nation that they are not just symbolic. The same with the Eucharist. It's not symbolic. It's the true presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. St. Paul is telling us, as he said to the Corinthians, what I received from the Lord, I handed it over to you, that on the day he was to suffer, he took bread, this is my body, and then at the end of supper, he took the wine, this is my blood. And these apostles, they have handed it to us, and you and I, we have to show that faith in the true presence of Christ. That's why when we come to receive the Holy Communion, we receive with reverence. I know sometimes people come and say, when you say the body of Christ, they do this. You, they want the body to be in the... That's not the way we do this. This is the seat where the body comes and then you partake. And we have to say amen because we believe. Amen means yes, I believe that there's a true presence of Christ in this. That is what we are celebrating today. That's our focus. Let's be part of the 31% in this country who believe in the true presence of Christ in the Eucharist. And let's help others who have moved away to say this is just a symbol. Let's help them to understand why we believe in the true presence of Christ. St. Thomas Aquinas said, the sacrament of Eucharist is the sacrament of love because it signifies love and it produces love. And that's very true because when we celebrate, we remember the love, the compassion, the forgiveness of Jesus Christ to us. And he sends us the same to others. That's why we have the multiplication of the bread today in this solemnity of the Corpus Christi. That when we receive the Holy Communion, we go out there to be Christ-like to others. We do this as St. Anthony's. We reach out to so many people in need, food, electricity, water. We reach out to them. But each one of us, wherever we are, we have to continue the same spirit. That's why Jesus, when the disciples, the apostles came to him and said, dismiss the people to go and find food for themselves. He said, no, feed them yourselves. That's what he's saying to us. When we receive Holy Communion, nobody should be dismissed from our lives because the Eucharist is the sacrament of love for all. So it's not just us as St. Anthony's, but all the people that we meet in the streets. Those people who ask for a dime, for a coin, for whatever, we reach out to them. Jesus is saying, do not dismiss them. Reach out to them. Feed them. That is what communion means. So when we receive here, we take Christ wherever we are. Let not anybody be dismissed from our lives. So if there's somebody that you have dismissed from your life, think about it today when you receive Holy Communion. What is Jesus saying to you? Do not dismiss that person. Reach out to that person and feed that person. Reach out to that person in his or her needs. My dear sister and brothers in Christ, let us bring the Eucharist where it's supposed to be. Let's believe in the words of Christ and let's believe in the true presence of Christ in the Eucharist. 
This is the sacrament of love. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, Consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sake he was crucified under Portia's side. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom we have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the Holy God, Catholic and Apostolic Church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. In thanksgiving to God our Father for the sacrament of communion, we pray and offer our prayers to God and all the intentions and the needs that we have, and also remember those people who have asked our prayers. As we celebrate the great gift of our spiritual nourishment, we pray that in uniting with Jesus Christ in the Eucharist, we be strengthened in our faith and love of God and neighbor. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Eucharist will be celebrated with devotion and reverence, so that inspired by the Spirit of our Lord, we may live as a Eucharistic people, generously giving of ourselves for the good life of all people in need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As the church launches the national Eucharistic revival this Sunday, we pray for bishops, priests, deacons, the religious and all Catholic Christians to respond to the Lord's personal invitation of uniting us through the Holy Eucharist we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As the body of Christ, we pray that in our daily lives, in our every moment, we be aware of this wonderful privilege and act with goodness, integrity, honesty, and love in our relationships with others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all fathers that they be guided by the Holy Spirit to love and support their families, and by the grace of the Lord, that they be models of holiness and truth for all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As Jesus had compassion on the multitude of people, we pray for all people throughout the world who are hungry, homeless, and the sick, that their needs for food, shelter, love, care, and compassion be remembered and supported, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our faithful departed who shared the bread of life and the cup of salvation may receive its promised reward of eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For what else shall we pray?
Lord, hear our prayer. prayers we hold so deeply in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God and Father, receive those prayers we have offered you this morning, especially, Lord, as we celebrate the most holy body and blood of your Son, our Lord, who is our Savior. We pray in communion with him that we may bring his presence wherever we are, the presence of love, peace, and justice. Grant all thee through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn can be found on page 750 of our green hymnals. Page 750, Taste and See.
pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is through really right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gifts of perfect praise, nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy, so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that birthed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heaven realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the host of angels, cry out, and without end, we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created right to give you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Gracious, make holy these gifts. We have brought you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and giving you thanks he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. In the end, we we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come, until you come, until you come again. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, 
We proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come, until you come, until you come. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognize the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Anthony, our patron saint, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jacques, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen, gracious, to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow the world, all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Gracious grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and you graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of the peace of Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter in the Lord, but only say the word and my soul shall be free.
became sin, who knew no sin, that we might become his righteousness. He humbled himself and he carried the cross. Love so amazing. Love so amazing. Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sin. His body the bread, his blood the wine, broken and poured out all for love. The whole earth trembled and the veil was torn. Love so amazing, love so amazing. Rescue for sinners, the rescue for sinners. He's the ransom from heaven. Jesus Messiah. Lord of all. Jesus Messiah. Name above all names. Blessed Redeemer, Blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, He's the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah,
please remain seated. Uh, today, uh, in uh, the country, the bishops launches uh, the National Eucharistic Revival today, and it will continue until 2025 on Pentecost. But the first phase is from today until June 2023, that will be 11th. That will be the revival of the diocese. So there will be activities. What the church wants today is to bring those 70% to come back to accept the true presence of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. So today we begin this journey, uh, the National Eucharistic Revival. So we are going to be part of this to participate fully. So the way I thought we can start as a parish uh, tomorrow, Monday, if all of us can find time to begin the novena to the body and blood of Christ, you can find it online on the uh, USCCB. Uh, you can find it in other Catholic uh, uh, website. Uh, so we start together at any time you want to start uh, tomorrow, and it will end the following week on Tuesday. Uh, that will be our novena to the body and blood of Christ. And then on Wednesday that week when we finish, we'll begin at our parish uh, the exposition and adoration of the Blessed Sacrament on Wednesdays uh, before 11 o'clock mass, so it will be at 9.45 to 10.45, just an hour of adoration. So if you have time on Wednesdays, uh, beginning next week, not this week, uh, 9.45 to 10.45, the exposition and adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. So that's the way we are going to begin uh, this National Re uh, Eucharistic Revival. And there are three main important parts to participate. One is to be a prayer partner with all the nation to pray that we revive the true presence of Christ in the Eucharist. So be a prayer partner. Two, to give testimony. Why do you believe in the Holy Communion, the Eucharist? And the third is to pray always for the coming of the Holy Spirit to touch the hearts of so many Catholics, not just in this nation, around the world, especially those who have moved away from the Eucharist. So that's the way we are going to participate. So at this moment, if you can, we are just going to kneel for some time after the adoration of the Blessed Sacrament because we are celebrating this wonderful and special gift to us. And at the end of those moments, then we'll do the closing prayer and the blessing from the Blessed Sacrament. Please, if you can, you can kneel with me. Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity 
is that share in our divine life which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood who live and reign forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We in Mass in our green hymnals on page 777. Victory is mine. Thank you. 